Hey guys, I'm T-A-D-D-Y, I don't know, but today we are back with Distractable. Now guys, let's first discuss the elephant in the room, which is Mark and his new video about <clears throat> him and his tasteful nudes again. I did not get a chance to get his tasteful nudes calendar, and I am not for OnlyFans. But if he goes on OnlyFans, I may just consider it. But only if y'all listen to Distractable, okay? Y'all better listen the F out of Distractable and go on my favorite sports team. Like, I'm dead serious. I was thinking of doing an ad for them. But no, I'm not that talented to do that, so. Not gonna do that. Not gonna do that. So today we are gonna do just math, math science, math, math and um, English. Um, but yeah, nothing, nothing really special. I had to do some homework, so we have to do it together. I tell you guys this every time. It's either homework, um, word search, or knitting. And today is math, and it looks like it's gonna be math for a while. So, with that being said, let's dive on in. On big or small? I'm big. I'm, I was never small. So, I'm, I'm on the big side. This episode of Distractable is presented by Intel. Bum, 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 bum. How wonderful is that? How wonderful. This episode is brought to you by Eggland's Best. You and your family deserve the best. And with Eggland's Best, that's what you get. Their eggs are tasty and nutritious. With six times more vitamin D, ten times more vitamin E, and 25% less saturated fat than ordinary eggs. They're also available in classic, cage-free, organic, and hard-cooked, liquid, and frozen varieties. Eggland's Best. Better taste, better nutrition, better eggs. For more information and delicious recipes, visit egglandsbest.com. Good evening, gentle listener, and Good welcome evening. to Distractable. Thank you. Oh, with our production. This week, Bob Light's Big School has affinity for large bow wows, but prefers handheld versions. Wade doesn't move, nor attend parties, but loves a crap of pizza and dislikes a tiny pax. Mark misses the seasons and is worried about street sharks and the trusty man. Yet wizards take batsies and teeth cause him a huge meltdown. And what? It's time for big or small. Now sit back and prepare to be distracted and enjoy the show. Thank you. Hello and well, man, this are, these are getting increasingly <laughs> awkward. This is the intro now. Use this, Will. Hello and welcome to Distractable, another episode of your favorite podcast. It is. It's not yet. It's probably only because you haven't listened to it yet. So get ready to laugh and feel and be transported to another time and place but only metaphorically. My name is Bob. I will be your host for this episode. The general format here is I, the host, bring a topic or a poorly researched story or nothing at all. And I present it to my competitors and co-hosts, Mark and Wade. Hello. Oh, hey. Ah, come on. Stupid thing. Is that where we were supposed to say hi? Right. That's the, yep, that was prompted me to, yep. We've been doing this a long time. I know the cues. <laughs> We're a well-oiled machine. We even finish each other's laundry. Thank you. I appreciate that, by the way. The starching is unnecessary, but I like a good folded basket of laundry. Sentences! Ah, yes. Ah, oh, the French. I know. What? Huh? <laughs> I, you guys know that meme? I forget even who it was. It's some. It's a very famous actor or something. It's like the guy who played The Godfather. I don't know. It just goes, oh, the French. <laughs> no, no, I uh -huh. thought you were calling out the French for no reason. <laughs> just, you know, what's up, Frenchies? Portugal! <laughs> hey, 
Well, like saying it's cool. Why, how do you say it like that? I don't know. You know that meme where the guy yells Portugal? <laughs> is that an actual meme? You just started it right now. Just like the French one. Mine is a real meme. Mine is now. Mm. Portugal. I declare it. <laughs> so <laughs> Portugal. <laughs> All right, before we get into this, I do have to say it's an exciting episode because every point that you earn is going to be brought to us by Intel. You'll get to hear that sound we all know and love, the Intel bong, every time I award points. Oh. This episode of Distractable is sponsored by Mint Mobile. Do you guys know Mint Mobile is just 15 bucks a month? You know, that sounds really cool, but the main selling point of this whole deal is that Ryan Reynolds is the owner of this company. You base your phone carrier interest on who owns it? I mean, there's so many other things to consider. 15 bucks a month, like, for example. Come on, that don't matter. Now when you could be one step closer to Ryan Reynolds. That's cool. I think it's more impressive that uh, Mint Mobile gives you the best price, whether you're buying for just yourself or you're going to do like a family plan. It's, they do as little as two lines on that, which is nice. And they don't trap you into a two-year contract or open the bill to find all crazy fees and things. No luring you in with free subscriptions to streaming services. Uh -huh. None of that. They could trap me for two years in a room with Ryan Reynolds. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like the tone of that laugh, I gotta be honest. But I mean, look, if I could own a phone that was maybe touched by or sat upon by Ryan Reynolds, oh, you too. that might improve my day-to-day -day phone usage. And Mint Mobile would let me bring that phone because they let you bring your own. So like, I get maybe that is cool. I would accept that. Guys. Also, the unlimited talk and text, yes. the great yes. high-speed data. Yes. Mint Mobile stands alone as great, even without him. With him, better, sure. But Mint Mobile is great. And everyone out there, including you two, can get premium wireless from just 15 bucks a month and no unexpected plot twists at mintmobile.com slash distractible. That's M-I-N-T-M-O-B-I-L-E dot com slash D-I-S-T-R-A-C-T-I-B-L-E. Seriously, you'll make your wallet very happy at mintmobile.com slash distractible. This episode of Distractable is sponsored by BetterHelp. I am continually angry from an experience that you guys don't know about, but also relating to a previous anger that was derived before the occurrence that recently happened that made me angry. What? Look, man, life is hard. Mm. Life is busy. Mm. Sometimes you gotta just take care of yourself. Mm. Sometimes you might need a little help. <laughs> like... Perhaps from better help. Today is not a good start to the day, and it's not really like anything terrible happened. Just like frustrating tiny things. They just weigh down on you someday. This is not a bit. This has actually been a very frustrating morning. Honestly, it happened. I've definitely had days like that, but better help offers online therapy, video calls, phone calls, even just like text chat, texting back and forth sort of stuff. You don't have to see anyone if you don't want. You have to go to an office or anything like that. It's convenient and they're licensed, trained therapists. Sometimes that buildup of frustration can just really weigh down and like collapse on your mind. Sometimes just letting that out, talking to somebody, letting that out can really just help. But calling you up in the middle of the night to complain about my problems and my problems with you that you have indirectly caused to me is exactly my favorite thing to do. So what gives? That's kind of why I brought this up. We're, um, mm -hmm. I'm not, not your friend, but this isn't what I'm here for, okay? I'm not your friend. Mm -hmm. When and if you want to become a better problem solver, therapy can help get you there. And you could start by visiting betterhelp.com slash distractible today. That's B-E-T-T-E-R-H-E-L-P.com slash D-I-S-T-R-A-C-T-I-B-L-E. Your lips can do a whole lot more than kiss. Your lips express love and speak your truth. Plump your lips with Juvederm Vobella XC or Juvederm Ultra XC for natural looking results that are completely and uniquely you. Find a licensed specialist and see if it's right for you at Juvederm.com. That's J-U-V-E-D-E-R-M.com. Add fullness to lips in adults over 21 with Juvederm Vobella XC or Juvederm Ultra XC. Do not use if you have severe allergies or a history of severe allergic reactions, or if you are allergic to lidocaine or the proteins used in Juvederm. Tell your doctor if you have a history of scarring or taking medicines that decrease the body's immune response or that can prolong bleeding. Common side effects include injection site redness, swelling, pain, tenderness, firmness, lumps, bumps, bruising, discoloration, or itching. As with all fillers, there is a rare risk of unintentional injection into a blood vessel, which can cause vision abnormalities, blindness, stroke, temporary scabs, or scarring. For full important safety information, visit Juvederm.com. 
today the stakes are high, okay? Today, there actually will be a winner, and it won't be either of the competitors, but also one of them oh, will technically <laughs> win. It's complicated. Wait, what? Wait, what? <laughs> it's not complicated, but uh, I'm not explaining it well, so it sounds complicated. Yeah. <laughs> There's no loss. Before we get into that party, how's it, how's it hanging? Left, right, middle? Right now up straight at the ceiling oh yeah upside down kind of yeah, you know how i go into these episodes <laughs> no, don't you get all worked up uh-huh that's uh when i'm at my funniest not like one of the corkscrews on a roller coaster at the moment <laughs> <laughs> it's hanging duck for you <laughs> yes <laughs> oh, oh yes a game all the way through. This is how this whole episode is going to be, everybody. Yep. Quality entertainment from start to finish. Yeah, hey, I'm having fun. Well, we are getting older. That's how time works. Yeah, anything new in your life? I don't actually think I have anything to contribute. Not that I'm as the host that I have to. I've personally been finalizing the edit of a, some TV show that people have been very, oh. very, very anticipatory Firefly? for. Firefly? Yeah. Finally getting around to. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even do How that. I just, if I just try and say you. the name, it just yeah does it by itself. I don't know. Yeah, it's a wonderful global technology that is watching over us. The universal computer. It's a new copyright technology. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, the future! The future where if you start playing something copyrighted that you don't have, the world is just like. Mm -hmm. Nope, can't play that song. No, nope. as it should be. If I try to say it, it also. Oh wait, wrong. There, got it. <laughs> Did you get that set up? Make that good. That's impressive. I'm sorry, was that some sort of copyrighted letter you just spoke out loud? Oh, yes. Uh, <laughs> I didn't say that one. I tried to say the letter. <laughs> the brand new 27th letter of the alphabet, copyrighted by Google or someone, probably. Uh-huh. Or no, who's the copyright troll company? Probably copyrighted by them. I don't know. I'd have to look at Is Are there copyright troll companies? I mean, that was a thing on YouTube, like, a couple of years ago, right? Oh, probably yeah. Probably still, but there were companies that were just like, oh, we have that copyright. You know, I'm having more copyright claims on YouTube right now than I have since, like, the first big wave of it. Like, every day, it's like three new videos are being claimed. Somebody is mad at you. And stop making copyrighted... Crap. Well, uh, when we saw you in person we'll together, you saw me. I don't like that. I will have had you go through and fix all my copyright claims for me, guys. Thank you. When I was staring in your window from a rainy. <laughs> What's wrong now? <laughs> and thunderstorms were raging behind me. I saw you. I actually came over the other night, but I didn't want to stop watching you sleep, so I couldn't wake you. <laughs> we will have had done that by the time this out. Yes, the great Bob Wade outing of 2022 to Los Angeles will have occurred, yes. Oh yeah, the five years thing. We've seen each other since the Australia tour, which was four years ago. That's so insane. No way. Is that true? All three of us together, I think that is oh, true. Because I've seen Mark. Yeah. Well, uh, Mark and Amy, Mandy and I hung out with once in the interim. Yeah, but all three of us being together. Yeah. Oh, that's horrifying. Wait, oh, is my birthday post-tour? Mark was at my birthday too. Wade didn't come to my birthday party, but Mark did. Yeah. Why does it pause? I don't know why it pauses. Real friend, host Bob. <laughs> you missed go karts. Mm. All right. Well, being a shitty friend who didn't leave you two to move out west and still is in Cincinnati. <sighs> yes, I am on the about worst. the west. Thing. How could you not? Uh, happiness, money, uh, I don't know. It's so sad in California. <laughs> <laughs> you guys have great stuff out there. No rain, fire, uh, land value that'll decrease whenever it's under the ocean in a few years. Hey, it's, good. Hey. it's great. The ocean. We're gonna be ocean front 
sometime in the next century. <laughs> fast thinking positively. We picked the right spot, man. Well, I, admittedly, I did just get back from a wedding that was in Wisconsin, and it was the first time that I had seen the leaves changing since I moved to L.A. I had this, like, well, not since I moved to L.A., but, like, for five years. It was this horrendous realization that, like, oh, God, this is a part of the world that I used to have every day of my life and just is no more, and that made me sad. Oh, but I'm happy. If only there was some way to correct the mistakes of the past. Peen house. Peen house. Peen house. <laughs> oh, yeah, I forgot about pee house. <laughs> the pee house or peen house? Peen. It was uh, both simultaneously. I, I mean, doesn't matter, I guess, yeah. Mm -hmm. Either either and. Either and. Uh, anyway, that wasn't really small talk about us, but that was good catching up, guys. Yeah, good catching up. Oh, uh... Yes. I'm excited yes. to have had been hanging out. <laughs> you know what? None of that's important. What is? Because now it's time to get to what is important. With a new recurring segment, maybe, probably, called Adjective or Adjective. Uh, oh, that's too narrow. Uh, th this or that. Mm. Wait, isn't that already a thing? <laughs> this or that? <laughs> yeah, no, that's like a, a I, maybe that's not, maybe that's someone else's already. A thing or thing. Thing or thing. Uh, okay. Uh, maybe put some more music or I don't know. Do your, do your thing, Will. Make that sound less awkward. Let's get the rights to use the song. I'm going to get some water. I'll be right back. That's it's literally on my desk. I'll be right back. Yeah, be oh. Will, make your own song. Sing the lyrics and do the two. Excellent. Probably outside the budget. Yeah. Be uh, do it for free? Pro yeah, bono. Probably outside the budget. Gotta be honest. <laughs> okay. Uh, no music. No happiness. Nothing. Uh, it's probably outside the budget. Hmm. It is in the budget. That was one too many. I didn't follow the rules. There is no budget. Uh, today, a rule of six. Today, you and also me am deciding an important and generation defining decision okay uh which one okay. will it be boys uh, big or small okay. um, uh, uh big we guess you we guess you we guess to you you don't have to decide right now we're going to talk it through but during today's discussion we are going to talk about various things and decide ultimately in the entire universe from here until eternity for the rest of existence whether it is better to have be or otherwise exist in a state of big or small. It must apply to everything. You can't have big, big one thing and small other thing. We're going to talk about all kinds of stuff and ultimately decide, and everyone has to follow our decision, whether big or small wins. The other one, gone forever. No such thing. No, okay. no small or no big ever again. Everything must be the one we choose. See? Big stakes, right? Told you. Uh, I'm so confused, but I'm ready and able and willing and able and willing and able. Well, well, well. I'm so torn already. It'll become clear. It'll become clear. We'll start We'll start slow. And you guys are okay. welcome to, once we get into it, you're welcome to bring your own evidence. Basically, I'm the judge of the episode and I'm the judge of this game. You each get a vote. You're allowed okay. to agree. Well, I'll just say we're going to start with cars. Big cars. Big topic. Vehicles. Motor vehicles. And, well, uh, you're allowed to both vote the same way. You're allowed to disagree. If there's a disagreement, I am the deciding vote. And uh, okay, for me, it's it's kind of there's no medium option, right? <laughs> but like my favorite car is a Jeep Wrangler, and that's a big car. That's a very big. It's not very big, but it's a big car. It has really big wheels, so. I don't really like tiny cars. Tiny cars annoy me, like those little tiny smart cars. And I hate mom's uh, Mercedes. It's too small for our family. For this, I'll do big. Cars big. Even though they take up most gas and it's like not healthy for the environment like at all. It's just more better. More roomy. You know, we have a big family, you know. So that's my decision. It'll make more sense as we go, and I think this is going to be good. This is going to be good for everyone. No more confusion. You need a bigger one or a small one or whatever. No choice. We'll decide for you. Uh-huh. You ready? Yes, I think. Maybe. No. Yes? I have no idea. All right. We're just going to ease into it. Like I said, cars, motor vehicles, electric or... Which one, boys? Big or small? Oh. Is this all vehicles or specifically cars? No context for me, just <laughs> motorized vehicles that humans use for transportation. Big. Small. Big. Big. Small. Big. Big. 
Oh, that was that was a lot faster than I thought we'd arrive at a vote. But back it up, because now I'm gonna have to decide. I guess oh, why? Why? I didn't know there was explanations that would be a part of this. Oh, I'm prepared. I've got my notes in front of me. I don't want you to be prepared. I want you to speak from your soul. Well, I am. I was making all that up to try to sound important. Okay, good. I thought you were cheating. No, but the reason I thought big was because of like mass transportation, like public transportation systems rather than individualized cars and being able to move lots of things at once rather than having to move a little, a lot of different times. So, uh, there you go. What about all those people that live in the cities? What are they going to do with their big auto? Walk, lazy little shits. Ooh. I say small because I, and there was no qualifications for this question. I don't consider mm -hmm. a train mm -hmm. to be a motorized vehicle necessarily. I would acknowledge that. The, so big cars. Okay, I would say road going. We're saying road, road going. going. All right, all road going. So yeah, small. It's big's a plague in terms of road goers. You don't want big road goers all over your neighborhoods. Mm. There could be big road goers hiding behind bushes, lurking around corners, ready to jump out at you at any moment. Spring up out of the ground from beneath the road. They swim in it like a shark. Like you know, street sharks. You know street sharks. Oh yeah, street sharks. sharks? Yeah. You remember that show? Well, they haven't come to the bay yet. Uh, you guys have street sharks in LA. Street, street the show. Street Sharks. The reality show about the sharks that live in the asphalt in the street? The TV show. Yeah, reality TV show. Street Sharks. No, it's, well, I hope Never it, yes, it is about reality. But you know what you can do it big? You can run over the sharks. The sharks are my concern. <laughs> really got bogged down in the sharks. Sorry, sorry. Yeah, yeah, too much shark talk. More about big is, it like, is a symbolism for bigness, and now that's bad. Mm. Yep. Uh, I counter with no. Weak argument. I like it. Thank you. Thank you. I guess I get to decide this one. I, I have to say, I lean towards small. <laughs> I like I like small because you don't. Everyone doesn't need cars. Could have trains. That's why you'd have a big bus. You could have bicycle lanes. You could have other forms of sort of mass transit. Also, you could potentially cheat and tow big trailers with small vehicles. I don't know what's happening. I'm sorry. Worlds where small things were designed to be powerful and good at that. Oh, so now we're just making up stuff. A small little car can pull a huge trailer? No, that's what semis are for. Big! Just because it is big doesn't mean it needs to be. Everything has to be like a smart car or, you know, one-seater vehicle. Like a Ford Focus is small enough. That was pretty small. I gotta go small. I gotta go small. Sorry, Wade. Hell yeah! That's points. That's worth points. Dun, 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 dun. Internet, you know who's right. Your viewers, listeners, watchers, subs. Whoever, I know it's right. Called, simple audience, dear, mm -hmm. dear members. Keep going. Uh, <laughs> You're almost there. MySpace friends. Yeah. Uh, Tom voted. Tom. Tom voted big. Ah. And you should too. I didn't know that. Mm. All right. Well, do we understand? Do we all understand what we're doing now? It feels yeah. like we do. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Of course. Really? Yeah. Is this too obscure? Yeah, I'm getting screwed by make believe rules again. It's one thing. Calm down. I get it. There's never multiple layers to times you host. Mm. It's all on the surface. Yeah. It's all out in the open. Okay. Well, I'm glad we're together. You know what? I just want to let you guys know. I'm so prepared today. I brought a physical notebook with a pen that I checked and is working. Oh. Ooh, being prepared, that's two points for you, Bob. Ha <laughs> ha! Yay. <laughs> I'm not going to tell you how you win, but we have to first decide big or small. That's okay. very important to the whole premise. Mm. The next thing I would like to talk about is cell phones. Ooh. Big or small? Because there's been kind of a cyclical thing, right? When they were first invented, huge, like a briefcase mobile phone situation type deal. And they were constantly like, gotta be smaller, gotta be smaller. And to the like late 90s, 2000s, everything was like smaller, smaller, smaller. And then at some point they were like, wait a minute, bigger cell phones. Mm. How big can we go? Folding in half screens and all this stuff. But which is... For, okay, so I am at a disadvantage because my phone is medium size, but I do like the bigger phones because I know it's, it's basically like a tablet in your hands, basically, but it, I don't know, I just, I, I like bigger phones. And, and they could, and I know that they hold more storage, so it'd be better for YouTube videos, Hey, So, yeah, but yeah. Bigger for me when it comes to phones, but I do miss the little flip phones and Blackberries, I miss those, but um, yeah, just big phones when it comes to touchscreen um, mobile phones, you know. Really better. Big phone or small phone? 
Who's first? I said. Sounds like Wade's first. <laughs> really? You don't want a huge yes. screen to, to watch no. YouTube on? The screen is nice, but we're going to have the, the projected virtual reality images, just holograms all around us eventually. I don't need a big brick in my pocket. I want something light that I barely feel so I can wear my comfortable gym shorts around and not have them falling off on one side or making me walk weird because I've got 30 pounds in my right pocket. Sounds like he wants big, but he's in big denial. He wants those big holograms and screens. My phone is huge and presents an even huger hologram. The biggest brick. It could light up the sky with how huge it is. A uh, big phone for a little man. Compensating, are we? <laughs> Have fun pressing those buttons with your ham-fisted fingers. Don't need to, and I can just look at the hologram, and it knows what I'm thinking. Yeah, the big hologram, or is that tiny, too? I bet it's too small to even see. You gotta squint. The hologram weighs nothing. It could be as big or small as it wants to be. And yet mine's still bigger. Huh, weird. I didn't realize this was gonna be so heated. I have to be honest, I thought. How dare you. Whoa, whoa. Hey. <laughs> Take yeah, it down a notch. Yeah, I told that. Oh. That's fighting words. How dare you? There you go. Perfect. Perfectly boring sounding. Uh, but you disagree again, which means I have to decide again. I was sort of thinking we'd agree on some of these. I kind of do this flip flop. I just, with the new phone that came out, the uh, new iPhone, I got the bigger version, right? You always had the small one, didn't you? No, I've alternated. Almost every two mm. years, I alternate because I go like, well, maybe I want the big one. And then I go like, oh, no, but look at the small one. That'd be more convenient. And then I'm like, ah, oh, but so lately I'm in a big swing. Mm. This, is a, this is a big phone year. I hate dealing with big bricks. I've always gone with the smaller version. Or at least the, like, medium one. I never go with the biggest one. Well, you also put a really thick case on yours. I have to. Don't you have, like, one of those big otter box or whatever, yeah, like, super throw it off yeah. a building phone case type deals? Yes. What do you do to your phone? I'm always curious what people... Because you don't, like... Nothing. It's protected. Well, but you don't, like, drop it a lot or anything. I get if you're... If no, you're if having... I have a cat and I leave it sitting around and my cat likes to knock things off, so... Uh, modern phones would survive with no case from the counter to a hard floor most of the time. Not in this house, Bob. Nothing survives in this house. Okay, you have more gravity in your house or something? <laughs> He's got spikes yes. along the floor, you know. It's too much He's mud got... dripping everywhere. The water damage that could occur from any surface is incredible. That's true. The threat of eminent water damage is a, probably a big concern. Things come down in this house aren't, that aren't meant to go down. <laughs> <laughs> Someday your whole home is just going to be sucked into the crust of the earth. What would we call you then? Magma men? We'll take a s silence as a yes. Oh, yes. The crusty man. The crusty man. Well, oh, the crusty man can. He fixes it with mud and makes your water taste good. <laughs> oh, I get. I hate that. Crusty <laughs> man. Are you having a nice morning? <laughs> you know who can ruin that? The crusty man. What do you want to blink your eye? Crust. All these happy kids walk in and they leave all sad and dejected. Oh, I hate that. I wish the crusty man was just a guy who made really good pie crust. That, was that would be pretty cool, you know. You're just like, hey, crusty man, I need two pie crusts for, for Thanksgiving. You can go. Well, I make a pie crust, but it's also including all the other crusts you don't want. <laughs> it's full of mud, too. All varieties of crust fall within the crusty man's domain. <laughs> just as Aquaman can speak to all sea creatures. What about the crust? Crusty man is the master of crusts. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like it. You don't like you it. Always need more crust. Need more crust. Need more crust. <laughs> I know what's wrong with it. Ain't got need no crust, crust on it. Yeah, my pizza shop only does 99% crust and, and just a little drop of sauce in the middle. <laughs> we make a deep dish. It's four inches thick. Just crust topped with one spoon of... You don't eat the crust. <laughs>
the end, like after you've emptied the contents of the middle because they're real liquidy. Yeah, this guy is crust only pizza, but he still doesn't <laughs> eat the crust. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Gotta save it for the next pizza. Yeah. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. Reusable crust bowls. What is this I'm remembering? Is this an SNL skit? You guys seen Cup of Pizza? Oh, it's uh the jerk, the Steve Martin movie. Cup of pizza. It's like the old pizza and a cup guy right out of business. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's just a big that. cup with, with like sauce, <laughs> cheese, and pepperoni in it. Pizza in a cup. But imagine that the cup is crust. Cup is crust, got it. Mm -hmm. So it's it's a bad cup. It's a bad cup. We can call it a crup. I, nobody. No one ever. No. As far as I know. Better than a cust. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know he's right. You got us there. Yeah, you got us there. That that, that's, that's that's good good point. You're right. You're right. Good points get good points. That's what I always say. Bum, 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 bum. Thank you. You both get a point for laughing at my joke. Hmm? Yeah, I'm winning in Wade's game. <laughs> Damn it! He's giving me so many points today. I'm losing in both of these games. Yay! God. I love it. Uh, anyway, good arguments all around, and obviously I must conclude that Wade is right on that one. So far. Oh, oh. I thought we were talking about pizza. I forgot about the first one. Yeah, the first one. I'll take my point. Wade is right. It's small. I share your uh, delusional dream, though, Wade, that the small phones will develop into the uh, holographic, hologramic, holographic phones. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just like a projector or something, at least, you know? Or they'll, like, implant something in my brain and I'll just hallucinate my phone. Mm -hmm. I'm here for that. That's the future. That might be. Yes. I mean, it's coming eventually. Like, you, this technology always sneaks up on you, just like with all the AI image stuff. It's like every week there's a new development in it. As soon as it hits a critical mass, it, like, starts accelerating. And then um, yeah. one day it'll be like, yeah, we put a chip in someone's brain. It, like, it makes them a little smarter. And then in a year it'll be like, you are an idiot and incompatible with humanity in the future if you don't have a chip in your brain. Because you literally can't do anything. What if it could work twofold? What if it like sucked up dust particles and then shot them in the air and then projected into the dust particles and sucked them back up? So it clean your house, project holograms, and then re-clean itself up. That yeah. makes complete sense. Dude, like, wow, look at look at that. <laughs> the Dusto Suckogram <laughs> phone. Look at my phone, just stop, guys. Yeah, no! Stop breathing in. Hey, <laughs> then cell phones would really be in the cloud. <laughs> Is that what that means? Two points for Bob. Imagine you're going into a hospital. It's like, ah, oh, you're recovering. Let me take a picture with my hologram phone. No! <laughs> then everyone's dead. The room fills with dust, and everyone is... Okay. <clears throat> so cell phones. Small. I'm, yes. I'm glad we agree. Yeah. All right, this next one, I already know we're divided on. Because of how reality is, but I want okay. to discuss it. Okay. okay. Dogs. <gasps> big dogs. Big dogs. In general, big dogs. We all have dogs, so I feel like this. Big dogs. Big dogs. Big, Great Dane. Big, I feel big like dog. dogs are like boobs. You can accept them at all sizes. But if I have to pick, I like my small dogs. I'll go small dogs. You guys know the reason I like small dogs over big dogs? Why? Why? There's only one reason because I grew up with dogs and they're small. And the one time I had a big dog, it had separation anxiety and it did like twenty thousand dollars worth of damage in our house in my car. Oh my God. Then I went Wait, back. Your car? To, yeah, it, it, we had a German Shepherd that learned how to open car doors, but it didn't know how to open them from the inside. So it locked itself in my car, like out in the sun and the heat in the summer. And then it like it tried to chew its way out of my car. Damn. Jeez. Ah, yeah. Did he make it? Yeah, yeah. Well, I I was looking for him and I was like, Mom, where's the dog? And she's like, Oh, well, he should be. Uh, blah, 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 blah. So I went to look for him and couldn't find him. Huh. And then finally, like I opened up the door to the outside and my car was just all steamed up from him like panting and breathing in there. Oh, and I opened the door and he flew into the house to the water bowl. Oh, man. And then just pieces of leather were falling out of the car. Poor pup. Yeah, He ended up being okay. I felt really bad for him, but also, like, that was, I think it was like $4,300 worth of damage he did to my car. Mm. It was a bad day. I would like to claim insensitivity points. Just just went through a, a thing with the Chica having heat stroke, and this is very... Very traumatizing for me to hear. I'm sorry, only your uh, dog's allowed to have problems. My bad. <laughs> Those dogs are from so long ago. How rude of you to have had that happen to you, Wade. Yeah, my bad. How rude. My dog had back surgery this year, but you know who's keeping tally? Well, that's a current dog. Your other dogs are dead, so I guess... <laughs> <laughs> you not a current dog? What happened? Stop! Uh, Chica's alive. She is alive and, and has all of her uh, legs and also the rest <laughs> yes. of whatever dogs have. She is fine. fine. She's fine. She's fine. She's fine. Great. <clears throat> I don't know who won or lost that part. 
<laughs> well, it's up to Bob. It's not over yet. I'm just curious. Oh, good. So that's literally like the main and only reason you like small dogs over big dogs, then? Like, do you like hanging out with big dogs and stuff? Yeah, I really don't mind big dogs at all. I like all dogs. What if you got a big dog that was not so particularly challenging? Because not all dogs have that. I mean, that's fine. One of my favorite dog breeds is a husky, but I, I don't think they do super well in Cincinnati because of their thick coats. Oh, they're so loud. Oh, my God. Yeah. They're very they're loud. They're so beautiful. I had one when I was really young, but they're such a beautiful dog. But those are big dogs. You could yeah. sit there with your earplugs covered over by your sound canceling headphones while your husky screams at all hours. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I, I feel bad having a husky in any kind of warm environment. I just like, I exactly. I just can't do that to him. That's true. But at the same time, they are very beautiful and very loud. Yes. Having been on pet TikTok, the main thing I know about huskies is that they scream mm -hmm. and that's it. Yeah. But other than that, you have Chica, and Chica is a very sweet dog and adorable. That's alive. Yes. That is alive. And has legs. Uh-huh. Many legs. More than one, in, for sure. All of the number she's supposed to have, yes. Yes. Do you have any strong reasons, Mark? Did a small dog do a small amount of damage to your car as a child? No, it's not necessarily that. I got nothing against small dogs. Is that, And I don't mean to generalize, but they're just kind of a little bit on the dumb side sometimes. <laughs> and, like, when it comes to dogs... Dogs, it's really like I have a dog because of companionship and uh, kind of also dependability. I'm not saying small dogs aren't dependable, but they are very helpless. And it feels like it's a one-sided exchange where I'm just like preventing death from approaching a tiny dog from all angles. <laughs> I've never really had a small dog, but that's what it feels like. Cats are small, but they can fend for themselves and like they, they are very self-sufficient. But when it comes down to like a dog dog, what I always imagine is just like a larger dog, whether it's a golden or any other breed. And and it's just like that that level of intelligence like is just like having that connection and like the understanding the it's it's that marveling of like it the dog constantly understanding certain things and also in chica's case she's the intelligence really doesn't shine through very hard i was gonna say i think both of my dogs are about four times as intelligent as poor chica well, yeah, well, 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 well it's off a well. much dumber energy stupider energy than i think is Fair. <laughs> yeah. I know she's not like helpless. Either. Yeah, she's, she's not helpless. Flicking off my watch and tried to eat a brick wall. <laughs> she did do that. She has her quirks. She, she does. Literally ate a wall in your old house. Oh, you've never Everybody eaten a wall. Everybody makes mistakes. Yeah, come on. <laughs> I've eaten a wall. She learned it from me. I, it's fine. Uh, so dogs do reflect their owners. They do. They do. They do. It's like Ethan described me one time, which is I'm the smartest dumb man he's ever met. And I'm like, I, I think that's Chica. She's, she's the smartest. Well, I'm not saying she's dumb. But do you think short people are dumber than tall people? Uh, Be careful with this one. It's a trap. <laughs> Yes, yes, <laughs> I agree wholeheartedly. <laughs> the bigger you are, the smarter, clearly. Brain size comparisons, yada yada. All right, points for me and Bob. Points for me and Bob. No, it's it's just like it's just what I grew up with, and and also some dogs are small dogs are. Uh, oh, oh, Mark hates small dogs. I like all dogs. Yeah, wow, that cuts. That's a political commercial right there is what that is. Mm. My opponent hates small dogs, <laughs> whereas my platform includes love for all dogs of all sizes and levels of stupidity. Mm -hmm. Markiplier hates meager mutts. Vote Wade today. Wow, you what are you calling him? Man, that's so rude. I'm going to take the sound bite of you just, <laughs> like... Uh, hey, meager mutts. This is what my <laughs> opponent has said about your dog. Well, now I can take it from you saying it too. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what are we all saying, meager mutts? I heard it. I heard Wade. You said me saying. You know, it'll be me saying meager mutts. <gasps> Can't believe. <laughs> now I can get you saying me saying. <laughs> you have me, I me, do me, you. <laughs> oh my god, what is this episode? What say at his last rally? Me saying <laughs> me your mutts! <laughs> See? He hates you, me your mutts! Me said it! Me is him in this context. Mm -hmm. He said me, which means mm, him, not me. May I ask me something? <laughs> well, if you're tired of all these political ads, why don't you come down to Wadios and get you a nice Krupa pizza? <laughs> it's a call.
It was. That just mm. tied the whole thing together. If that was what we were deciding today, I think you just won the whole thing, Wade. <laughs> no, right? It's not, though, so you no. didn't. Okay. Yeah, I still have a chance. Yeah, I do feel biased because I have a very strong kinship with uh, big dogs because mm-hmm. I'm a big dog myself, if you know what I mean. And uh, I, have a, I always have, like, a connection to big dogs. Or Lexi. But I love small dogs way, way more. But I feel it's hard for me because I feel like you guys are making me decide this. And mm-hmm. I have to caveat my answer by saying Mark is 100% correct. Some small dogs are so fucking annoying that I, oh, like, I agree. they're un- intolerable. <laughs> they're yappy and what... And it's not even whole breeds, right? There are just some breeds that have potential and or tendency to be really yappy and annoying and aggressive but like most small dogs in general that you can pick them up and scoop them like a little baby and sit on your lap and they won't accidentally make it so you can't have babies anymore in the future uh i lost i gotta go with small dogs Uh, shit damn it Chica does like to punch me right in the nuts <laughs> all the time. She loves to, whenever I'm around Chica, she loves to snoot me right in the nuts. Mm-hmm. <laughs> she loves to walk up and be like, hey. Oh, oh yeah, she does do that. Yeah. She just walks right up and yeah, yeah. 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 It's yeah. super really sweet and adorable, but also I'm always like, ha! Ah! No, I'm fine. I'm fine. If, <laughs> if I'm going to be fair, though, my dogs, like, can we have a little ramp for them to get up and off the sofa so they don't have to jump because of Ginger's back surgery? So they'll like run up on the ramp and then like to get across the the part of the couch they want to be on, they like sprint hop, like bunny hop across and they land right on your dick every time they try to get to their spot. Yeah. So they don't boop all their body weight just like plus the amazing extra gravity of this house makes it feel like a 40 pound weight is just falling right on your dick. <laughs> don't love that. 15 pound dog. Don't love that. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But I do love small dogs. Congratulations, Wade. Mm-hmm. 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 Thank you. Thank you. You did it. I do have some small dogs. All right. Well, a lot of disagreements still. I'm a little surprised, but it's been it's been interesting. We'll agree eventually. Probably. Right, Mark? I, I didn't know if we were supposed to agree, so. You're allowed to agree, but you don't have to. You're giving me all the power, basically, here. I was trying to set you up to say, no, we won't. <laughs> fine with me. Yeah, that's fine. You kind of do have the power. You're the judge. I was just, you know, it's a discussion. We're just deciding this for the entire world. If anyone were to break in to Distractable HQ and claim the throne of judge, they would have all the power in the world. We wouldn't be able to stop them. They would rewrite the rules. They wouldn't be able to get in if Distractable HQ just had more mud. Well, that's why we keep the crown of Distractable in that uh, Dr- drawer. In the drawer? Apple Watch screen is made of? No, it's in a sapphire case made out of that. Shallow grave in the basement. Sapphire crystal display glass. Oh. It's got a hardness of nine on the hardness scale. <laughs> Richter scale. Or, yeah, the hard scale. The hard scale. Richter is not the right word. No, that's the one for earthquakes, I think. Yeah. I don't know much about those. We don't have them here in the good part of the country to live in. Yes, you do. Yeah. They're rare. I've never felt an earthquake in my life. (laughs) I definitely have experienced an earthquake in Cincinnati at at some point when I was in college. Yeah. It was like nothing, but it was technically an earthquake. Yeah. It's almost like the earth moves everywhere. Oh. Mm. Uh, mm. Are you disagreeing? (laughs) (laughs) He doesn't believe you yet. Finish making your point about the facts of the universe, Mark. All right. I'm done. Oh, that's right. It's just a fact that school children know. <laughs> anyway, there was a clip. Sorry, there was a side trait. There was a clip of Tim the Tatman discovering that tectonic plates were a thing, and that if you dig down in an island, it wouldn't just be water underneath. Oh no! I don't know how real it is, but it's very funny. Oh god! I like. <laughs> I don't watch. I don't watch Tim, but I kind of know his personality, and I believe that completely. <laughs> <laughs> no discredit to him. It was really funny. No, I mean that's just hilarious. Everyone has some kind of knowledge gap. I'm sure that I have exactly the same type of thing somewhere in my mm-hmm. brain of my accumulation of knowledge. Yeah, I also believe it. Wait, was it live on stream though? I'm assuming because <laughs> it's a clip of it. Yeah. <laughs> it's so I'm sure it was the discussion that came up, and someone was like, "Yeah." I took time to play, and Tim was like, that's not a thing. 
I think it was started from like talking about Florida, and if you dig down in Florida, he's like, wouldn't it just be water at a certain point? Oh no! <laughs> like, oh no! I think I get where the misunderstanding comes from, like the idea of a water table and and that kind of idea. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, it is <laughs> pretty much like, oh no! I kind of want to go look that clip up now, but now's not the time. Now's not, not the time. time. <laughs> this is important. Yes. Focus. I'm not big enough of a streamer to go after Tim, so I'll just say I understand. Go after him? Are you going to go after him for that? I can't believe you guys are going after him like this is starting this Twitter drama. <laughs> Let's keep dragging him, guys. Yeah. He's almost down. Roast him harder. Oh, I can't do it. My clout is not enough. It's a battle I'll lose. Oh, my clout. My cloud is weak. <laughs> Even if I have correctness on my side, it can't overpower the <laughs> stupidity of social media. Wait, how dumb are you calling Timmy, or what are you saying? I don't, I don't know. I call social media dumb, not Tim. I think he was just complimenting Tim's cloud. Is he social media? He might be. Of course he is. It's no longer Tom. <laughs> it's now Tim. This is Tim. What happened to Tom? It was Tom the no tat What are we talking about? The tat man. Oh, God. You've changed, Tom. I think he prefers Tim now. <laughs> oh. <laughs> well, if I say Tom, he won't know who I'm talking about then. He's forgotten his he's roots. Here. He's addressing someone else. <laughs> okay. What a barn burner. How many uh, uh, notes do you have to get through, and how many have we gotten through? 35, and we've decided three. <laughs> This is like my tier list episodes. <laughs> These are not all. We're not supposed to get through everything I have listed. I've I've made a big list, and you're welcome if you're if you have an interest in in which way we go, big or small. Small is pretty dominating right now. Mm. You can bring your own thing for debate. I welcome it, but I have another one. Is small pretty dominant in a two to one victory right now. <laughs> it's, uh, it's it's three zero, <laughs> isn't it? No, no, no. You went big. The first oh no, one. we did big phones. Yeah, yeah. big phones. No, you know. Oh, did we do small phones? You did big for the first one. Remember the first? No, small car. It is small, isn't it? 3 Oh, yeah, wow. It's, it's all smalls. It's all small. Small phones, small dog. Each of you did not vote all three, but we decided that I decided them all too small. I'm just so used to winning that I forgot Mark won one. How large a sample size do you need for statistical significance? Three. Oh, well, there's probably other issues that invalidate no, no, the statistics. It must be three. That's what I heard. <laughs> Oh, okay. Wait, statistics? I thought those were a myth. I <laughs> like tectonic plates. I'm doing statistics real. right now, Bob <laughs> and Wade. <laughs> right, we need to do at least one to five Why? more. Why? <laughs> Because I want to hear your opinions. Mm. You guys should check out Distractable. That was very effective promotion. I have a feeling they are did. Thank you. <laughs> they uh, are did. They weren't. But this one's about a thing we like, guys. Uh-huh. Okay. I mean, I, I like phones and dogs. Wait. <laughs> Yeah, well, this is about a thing that's really important to us. Do not say boobs because I refuse to choose. That's on here, but I don't want to get into that. That's complicated. I want to talk about video game developers. Mm. Big or small? Small. I don't care how tall or short they are. Yeah, are we talking about the physical size of the individual or? Like, metaphorically. Mm. AAA or indie? Big oh. or small? Uh, uh, not to keep the small train going, but I'd go small just because small. I like the creativity and I'm always about like individuals having complete creative control and a singular vision, which is extremely rare in a larger studio. To have like that cohesive idea permeate through it. It's like it's very much, I'm a big champion of like the individual creator in that aspect. So I got to go small. I hate to be that guy here, but I agree. Hmm. Yeah, you know what? Now that I think about it, I'm, that was not that disagreeable of a thing i mean having a bigger budget and stuff is great but so many games seem to like just the bigger the company gets the more they kind of lose their way with what they started with and how it becomes less mm. great i don't know oh uh, you like small indie games name one uh your mom uh-huh! got him got him <laughs> still pulled one out from under you <laughs> I guess I would probably end up on small as well, but I was thinking when you guys might like big. I view like the big studios, like the big AAA stuff as like an action movie. Like my favorite movies are, I mean, all, all movies that get into theaters are relatively big compared to real indie movies. But my favorite movies are Except ones. Except for The Legend of El Diablo. <laughs> what? Oh, well, what is that? Is that your indie film? 
It's Put a, that a movie? Like a college-made film or something. I've got the DVD here. It's a terrible movie that I love and I watch it sometimes. <laughs> Worst thing I've ever seen in my life and I'm so proud to own it. I remember that story. What was it supposed to be? Well, I thought it was based on the video game Diablo. Like, I thought it was going to be like right. based on this, that series. Like, oh, that'll be cool. Oh, right. right. God, that's a classic uh, distractible story. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the Legend of Diablo is not, in fact. From the episode So Bad It's Good. Classic. It is classic. based on the uh, quote-unquote popular comic book. It says, I don't know what comic book. Popular with whom? With whom? The guy who wrote with it? Whom? I think I'm probably the only person outside of whoever was in this or made it that owns a copy. And I'm proud of that fact. It's impressive. That is impressive. Anyone else out there owns it, let me know on the subreddit. Was I? Why are we talking about movies? Oh, anyway, I was going to say, I prefer the movie that's more nuanced and, and indie-er as compared to like a $150 million Michael Bay explosion fest. But I also like the Michael Bay Explosion Fest. And that's how I feel. I like, I play EA Sports games. I know EA they're kind of sport. the same Two thing, games. recycled year after year. I like them. And like, I, I like Call of Duty for a long time. I, I usually play the campaign whenever the new COD comes out. I probably will again this year. It feels like trashy, but it's like trashy that I enjoy as a comfort. Mm -hmm. I have respect for a bad movie occasionally or like a, a popcorn flick. Yeah. Yeah. But ultimately, I would have to agree with you guys. Small game studios have made some very fascinating games that have been much more interesting. Than... Okay, bad choice. That's on me. You know what? That's a hosting mistake. Hmm. Hmm. All right. This one, you have to probably will disagree on. Maybe not. I'm not going to be thinking that through. What uh, festivals and or conventions. Mm -hmm. This includes anything like a, mm -hmm. like a Ren Fair, like a, like a PAX or whatever, TwitchCon, all these sorts of things, or like, you know, local, like, tabletop gaming or like a Magic the Gathering sort of tournament festival thing, all all ranges of things, anything that's like a festival, convention, get together, meet up, whatever. Big? That's small. Um, well, here's the thing. I haven't been to any type of convention or fair like that. I think the only quote-unquote fair I've been to is in like a pumpkin patch. If you count that, I don't know if you count that, but if you do count that, then I, I actually preferred it. I actually like it small because you can like, there's like a corn maze, you can pick pumpkins, there's a petting zoo and stuff like that. Like I'm used to small like pop-up stuff and like there's a small farmer's market that goes on over um, to the park uh, in front of the Capitol building or, or um, whatever the building is over there. Uh, City Hall, I think it's called. I don't know why it's called that. But it's the City Hall, I think, of Berkeley. And, like, there's, like, a, 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 like a small, like, farmer's market. And sometimes I can go through there and get some fresh lettuce for Pyro. So, you know, that's cool. But, uh, yeah, I've never been to VidCon or Comic-Con or anything like that. So, I want to know. But, um, let me get my food in here. So I can eat while um, we listen to some more Distractable. I'll be right back. Oh, all right, I am back. I got me dinner. I have a burger and fries, but no ketchup because we're out of ketchup apparently. Let's continue, shall we? Uh, is it me first this time? Uh, you can go first. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Uh, I mean, prior to COVID, I liked both a lot, but I, I found as I've gotten older and even like just through knowing myself, I like smaller get togethers. Like I feel like you have more time to talk to each person whenever it's like a smaller get together versus like a huge group thing. I feel like I'd prefer a smaller festival or a smaller group gathering because it's like more time to enjoy each thing. Whereas the big ones with like the crowds, the lines and so on and so forth, it just becomes exhausting and overwhelming more so than, I don't know, time to really enjoy anything a whole lot. So I'm gonna go small. I mean, here's the thing. I would love to say small from like, but we're talking like conventions here. Yeah, yeah. Not like friend group get together. It's more like organized thing. Yeah, because uh, small conventions are usually very, uh, don't have as many booths. They don't have as many people there. They don't draw as many people in. They don't draw as many friends in. And I don't really go to conventions at all anymore, especially after COVID. But I gotta say, like, there's something to be said about a big convention. My first experiences with conventions were San Diego 
Tokyo Comic Con, which is one of the biggest conventions in the world. Um, and there's some kind of like wondrous feeling to having that. See if people all there for a specific reason. Um, so honestly, like as much as I get like the idea of like, yeah, I, less people, but for the purpose of a convention, I don't think a convention can be too small or I, it can be too small in a certain aspect, but I feel like a bigger convention leads to more interesting experience. Well, for convention specifically, I would agree, but we talk about festivals and other things too. So I think like little music festivals even, and like even festivals, even festivals. Top things. I think that there there's a, a definitely a power in crowds because the idea of going to a place with other people, there's a word for it. I always forget it. There's a word for the experience of a shared human connection as a crowd experiences something they all like. It's there's a word for it, and there's a literal physiological effect when a large group of people experience something that moves everyone at the same time. It's why people like concerts. It's why people like uh, big things, even if they are a pain in the ass. So I, even even that, even like the, I want to go to the world's biggest Ren Fair. I want to go to the world's biggest comic book convention. I want to go to the world's biggest like YouTube convention. I, I want to go to those. Um, the others just don't really draw you in as much. I, I get your point and I agree with it. And I, I proposed at a convention. So yeah, I've got a pretty good connection to those. And having like the whole crowd there for that was pretty awesome. Albeit terrifying in the moment. But I don't know. There, there was like, like a um how small is that to be to count as small because there was like a a like little fish eating festival here in cincinnati Hell yeah. that still had like probably hundreds of people but comparatively to like a PAX to me is pretty small but I mean there's like you know 20 30 booths of different places where you can go and try like fish and shrimp and things like that and I was there with like family and friends and Molly and we just kind of walked around and tried some food it was really intimate but really just enjoyable and not overwhelmingly crowded that I enjoyed too so I, I don't know I, I guess it's hard to differentiate those two things because you're wanting different things from them so if you're grouping all of it together i guess i don't know which way i'd lean conventions specifically you're talking about like a pax like pax south was probably the least fun pax because it was the smallest one and they didn't have that many different games and things like after an hour on the floor you've seen everything so yeah bigger was better for that but some of the festivals where you just don't want to have to wait in lines for hours and hours to do something i definitely like the smaller feel so i, I guess it's hard to differentiate those two in my brain not uh, too bad you've already made your choice right right judge i mean he said it he did say yeah, it. I, he declared it. I guess you're locked in that way. Oh, okay. Mark made the new rule. No changes. <laughs> no take backsies. Actually, that's a pretty well-established rule. I want to make a new rule. Mark can't make rules. From here on out, I guess, but it's too late for the rule that Mark already made. Damn it. Can I make another rule? <laughs> no, because you that rule would effectively be a takes backsies of the rule that was made. Yeah, yeah no take backsies. That's already well-established now. Yeah. That's lore. That's lore. I don't really take backsies. It's more like an addendum. An addendum where you take back what you said and change it. Well, no, I stand by liking small festivals, but big conventions. No am dem doozies. No am dem dums. <laughs> no doom doos. We grouped a lot of things together that are kind of different. Yeah, well, it's a tough choice. We're deciding something for the entire universe at large. It's not easy, mm -hmm. okay? But you have to take a stand. And I took a stand on multiple fronts. Mark only talked about conventions. You took two stands. <laughs> I mean, he talked about everything, though. I And I, I would say I have to generally agree with Mark. Play the bong, Will. I totally appreciate what you're talking about, Wade, because I've been... Death protests. I've been to, like, the county fair, you know, or, like, what's really fun in Ohio is in the fall, there's, these farms will put up, like, well, that's more of an attraction than an event. But we had events. My school had an event where it was, like, there's a corn maze, there's a pumpkin patch, there's, like, the stuff. It's fun when there's, like, maybe a hundred to a few hundred people together, and it's very casual, especially if you know a lot of people. And I appreciate that. But if I'm going to a concert, a Ren Fair, a convention for video games, or, or otherwise, like Comic-Con or whatever, I'm going to hang out with friends, which a bigger one is likely to attract more of my friends to all want to go. But also, I'm going for, like, spectacle. Mm -hmm. I went to E3 because I wanted to go into the Xbox theater and see the game announcements and see Keanu Reeves come out on stage. And I'm, I want to see the costume contest where there's like a hundred people all lined up in this costume and they're like the highest caliber of costumes you've ever seen. And it's fantastic. And the, the stuff that you can't experience, because I feel like you can experience community in a lot of ways other than festivals and fairs or whatever, like small town type stuff or small get togethers. But the spectacle of a huge crowd crowd all getting excited about the same thing or or freaking out about the same crazy thing you just saw all together whatever mark that word he was trying to define that i also don't know yeah that is the thing about big gets like big concerts i've done big concert festivals before and it's exhausting and there's so many people and it's kind of gross but all 
also watching your favorite band play with like a few thousand or 10,000 other people there and everyone's singing and, and jumping and whatever, that's a singular experience. I have to go with big on this one. It's hard to capture that in any other setting. Well, I'm glad it sounds like we all three disagree, but I technically disagree. How do I disagree with Mark? I disagree with you. Well, I agreed with all those points. But hey, I, you staked your claim on the wrong that's side. That's true. And then a rule was made afterward. That's fair. I think mm -hmm. I guess. No one's staking. You stuck. You stuck. You were claiming to already stank. No one stakesies. Which is just an extension, not a modification of the established rule, no take taxis. Mm -hmm. Yes. It's really more of a term of art yeah. as opposed to a change in definition. And I think no take taxis is from which all human laws are yeah. derived. Pretty much. Well, and or laws relating to no take taxis, such as actions you cannot take taxis, mm -hmm. like murder. Like murder. No take taxis on the murder. No, I would allow take taxis. I mean, if we could if we could figure that out, that'd probably be pretty cool. But I don't think you can take taxis on murder. Mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure that's how that works. Well, if we find a way, you guys staked your claim that you wouldn't support it, and I do. <laughs> He's got us there. He's got us there. We can't take taxis what we said. When you're right, you're right. Mm -hmm. So, moral point for me. I'll take it. Moral victory for Wade. Mm -hmm. Meaningless victory. <sighs> As morality tends to be in this world. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Want a smoother contour and more youthful looking cheeks? Rediscover a younger looking you by adding volume to the cheeks with Juvederm Voluma XC. Part of the number one selling collection of dermal fillers based on January 2022 provider survey data. With help from Juvederm Voluma XC and a licensed specialist, you can achieve a more youthful cheek look completely customized for your goals. For important safety information and to find a licensed specialist, visit Juvederm.com. That's J-U-V-E-D-E-R-M dot com. Not for people with severe allergic reactions, allergies to lidocaine, or the proteins used in Juvederm. Common side effects include injection site redness, swelling, pain, tenderness, firmness, lumps, bumps, bruising, discoloration, or itching. There's a risk of unintentional injection into a blood vessel which can cause vision abnormalities, blindness, stroke, temporary scabs, or scarring. Talk to a licensed specialist to find out if it's right for you. You are unstoppable, going from one exciting thing to the next. That's why at Simple Mills, we use purposeful ingredients like almond flour to make tasty snacks, like delicious soft-baked snack bars and crunchy chocolate chip cookies with just the right amount of sweetness and crackers bursting with flavor. So you have enough energy to keep going, even after spin class, school drop-off, five meetings, and walk in your neighbor's Great Dane because they're in Tulum for two weeks. Simple Mills, nutritious snacks that never slow you down. Live full. All right. Well, I don't know how I feel about this one, but I want to talk about it because I'm curious what you're going to say. Uh-oh. The next one is teeth. <laughs> teeth? Oh, I was expecting some others. Or small. <laughs> oh. Small? Because yeah. I have these two big butt teeth and they're kind of annoying. Substantially bigger than the biggest size of tooth that's within, like, the, no, the, the oh, widely, you man. know, the median range of what humanity has. And also smaller teeth, substantially smaller teeth than, you know, where, like, the, the normal median, normal's a rude word to say, but, like, where, where the average falls as far as tooth size in humanity. Because there's a wide range you get people with comparatively much larger or smaller teeth than each other which is part of genetics and stuff but i'm talking like giant chompers small giant chompers. or nibblers mm, okay which is better we're human only right Humans only. Humansonly.com. God. <laughs> Man, this, uh, because uh, the pro, are there tiny teeth? <laughs> are there more of them to compensate? Because that uh, well, affects... you need a whole mouthful. Yeah, no. You, oh, you, you, you have God. the same tooth area. Or there'd just be more gaps in between. I mean, there could be gappy. Oh, no. Are there and layers? Big. If no, there's... no, it's just arranged in uh, what would be a stereotypical human arrangement. I'm assuming you'd have the same amount of teeth they'd just be smaller so it'd be like gaps in between what if they're all just bunched up in the front or off to one side just empty in the back well yeah because this this dictates my how i think it I, varies I need... person to person mark 
Why would it do that? He, evolutionarily, that doesn't make <laughs> any sense. Why do people's teeth differ person to person? They don't really. <laughs> Evolution has no meaning. Humanity has developed medicines no, and, no, and no, food supplements. No, I Evolution have to believe. Over. I have to believe that this was a change in the course of evolutionary history, where big teeth are just humans have big teeth, or humans have lots and lots of small teeth. It has to be one or the other. For me. I can't just be like, oh, magically they're bigger or smaller. Because if they're bigger, then all of a sudden I wouldn't be able to open my mouth anymore more and get anything in, I would die. A wizard cast a spell, and all teeth get big or small. <laughs> no! This is a wizard's here! This is science! I established this rule. No take backsies. No, no, no. You're taking backsies what was originally human. You're taking backsies what was human and what was earned. You don't like it when someone establishes a rule, do you? Generations of uh, evolution. You, you, are, uh, you are abusing the power of taking backsies. I sure am. Is he allowed to abuse the power of take backsies? Absolutely. There was Damn no it. rule about abusing take backsies. There was simply a rule that there are no take backsies. <sighs> All right. Okay. Well, then by the law of take backsies, I declare, I declare that this entire question is invalid because it takes backsies from the root of what makes the tooth the tooth and there is unlike any other question that has been substantiated at this point been a situation where one or the other exists and yet no evidence has been presented to which this occurs without takes backseeing the very fundamental basis of what a tooth is and it disregards all the functional backsies that have been established for the entire history of toothdom as far back as life exists this entire premise is invalid all right so mark refused to answer i'll say small because if it bothers you cosmetically you can just get like dentures there you go yeah answer. <laughs> uh, look mark i know that before we started recording i i owed you guys into this episode and you swore to tell the tooth the whole tooth and nothing but the tooth uh, but as the judge, the rules basically don't apply to me. You understand that, right? Mm -hmm. If you have small, gappy teeth, you can squirt your pizza from your crop out through your teeth. That's but cool. that's not uh, what I'm... Th you could do that with your normal teeth if you have a gap. What I'm thinking is many teeth, if it fills the same volume, you have thousands of tiny teeth. And I bet they fall out all the time. Uh, I think of the same amount. They're just small and gappy. Well, then you basically don't have teeth. You just have gums. So you don't even have functional teeth. You have uh, roots on which you can in uh, have implants put in, I guess. According to Wade. Yeah, but then you would just have normal teeth, and therefore you wouldn't have small mm. teeth. You would just get it fixed immediately. Therefore, the entire like premise is a little bit thrown off with that definition of small mm. teeth. Well, maybe you should have gone with small teeth then. For it to be teeth, they have to function, right? They have well, to still be functional in my mind. It can be functional. You could eat tiny food with small teeth. I don't know. It seems like they'd work on a certain scale. There's those tiny little corn cobs. Baby corn is just corn to a person with tiny teeth. You could eat applesauce with tiny teeth because you'd have gums. That's basically all you'd have. Unless, unless each tooth was like suddenly divided into a hundred tiny teeth, but it's in the same place. They're all stuck together into the shape of one tooth. Yeah, they're all like conglomerated. Oh. Yeah, exactly. It's a teratoma of teeth in your teeth. Oh, why did you make that? That's what I've been imagining the whole time. They're like Legos. We just absorb our ancestors and take their teeth to add to ours <laughs> to make a better mouth. Every time you eat, it's like a weird anime fight and some tiny teeth get scraped off the edge of the bigger tooth conglomerate. Ugh. Yeah, exactly. You're like a shark. You've got rows and rows of more tiny teeth that are waiting to push into the amalgamation of teeth just to replace Ugh. what you've lost. I just pictured a normal mouth with smaller teeth. I don't know. Maybe, maybe I'm the weird one here. There's no clear <laughs> way how this would happen in humanity. Mark has a fair point. So I'm going to go big because everything about small teeth that I imagine you is a insane. nightmare. I thought there was no take backsies. You you don't have to take backsies. I'm not. I'm doing nothing. So he's allowed. He did not changing anything. He's just finally choosing to commit. Yeah. Commitment issue, Mark over here. He went from refusing to answer to answer. I feel like that's a take backsies or refusal. You can't take backsies non-action. Yes, exactly. Non-action is nothing. Okay, you we're still just you making up rules. Got you it. didn't put back forth no, seas no, no, to no, begin whoa, with. This is not make up. Backsies <laughs> represents the idea of first going forward seas. You have to go forward seas to not backsies. I did not go forwards these. Mark never advanced these his position. Yes. I feel like you went forward with refusing to answer, and then you went back and decided to answer. No, I started from zero. You can't go negative into backseat action. <laughs> <laughs>
Uh, I'm right. I'm right. This is the dumbest serious sentence I've ever uttered. <laughs> Subred, I dare you to find a more serious sentence ever uttered that was somehow more stupid. If we were working in certain contexts of the American legal system, the decision of non-action is potentially an action. But in the context of boy rules, in which the take backsies context exists, non-action is just fear of commitment. A trait that most men share. Mm. It is not an action that must be back taken, and thus changing from non-action to commitment is not a take backsies situation, as we all know. Thank you. Sure. So Mark wins the debate. Unfortunately for Mark, I gotta side with Wade on the on the small situation. <sighs> no, no, it's horrible. You don't know the curse you're unleashing. The thing that gets me is the the big teeth fundamentally changes especially potentially in your vision of it mark it changes like what a person looks like it represents either evolution or i don't know radiation caused deformation <laughs> of humanity in a way where it's like either your whole head is big or just your jaw is big and it changes the the fundamental like aesthetic of what a human is in general even though that really poorly applies across all different you know, races and, and locations and genetic makeups of what humanity is as a whole. Imagine your back teeth being bigger. You couldn't even, like, close your mouth all the way. Well, see, oh, now you're worried about function. Ah, I see function comes in when you, it's not convenient. I when it's too big! I present to the court the evidence of the mask. Which... which... <laughs> The Jim Carrey movie? If you look up Jim Carrey's uh -huh. The Mask, he mm -hmm. endured the entire movie with dentures that were comically larger than his actual teeth, preventing him from many of the different things that enabled him to do, and yet he looked goddamn fantastic. Not nightmare-esque. He looks sharp as shit. Look at those big freaking chompers. So you're assuming that everyone's going to have big teeth that are exactly that size and are perfectly designed. Well, humanity is a range, Wade. It's well, not all yeah. going to be exactly the same. Just but... Google big teeth and look yeah. at images of big teeth that way. I'm going to do that, but I'm going to be really mad at you when I do. I'll look up big teeth. Big teeth people is the, just the first thing that comes up if you just type big teeth into Google. That's fun. Oh, these aren't even that big. Big. Even these people with big teeth are nothing compared to the mask, and that is because those teeth are prosthetics and they are huge. I will say, in my personal envisioning of the situation, I did think exactly of the mask, Jim Carrey and the mask, and that represented like the bottom bound of what I would consider big teeth. In my yeah, hypothetical. Yeah, me too, the bottom, like the lower tier of big teeth. I would say those are bigger teeth in the way that they look and how the dentures fit him. Those are bigger teeth than fall within, you know, not big, like the middle range of where humanity is right now, generally. So I have to say, I'm, I already wrote way like down. The smallest tier of small teeth, though. For having this point. It wouldn't be that big of a change. Uh-huh. Small teeth wouldn't even make that big of a difference either. It would be the same exact thing if you're just thinking of it slightly smaller. Slightly smaller, slightly bigger. But think of the extremes. Extremely small versus extremely big. Listen. That's where the change becomes like... You, you mm. can have your small shark teeth teeth falling out of your mouth nonsense. I'll be over here looking great in my yellow zoot suit with my giant teeth and green face, which I, I'm assuming it comes with it. If you have oversized back teeth, your mouth will not even close all the way, or they, your teeth won't align and you can't chew. I'll get braces. <laughs> this guy over here. That won't shrink them. That just means your mouth wouldn't close. It'll move them so that they align and I can teeth and my jaw will move. There is facts of dentistry that establish that the face and its different plates move and shift over time. My face would adjust, I would get more handsome. There's no downside to big teeth. After all of this discussion, I am happily sticking with small. Mm -hmm. I, I have to admit, I have tooketh back. <gasps> I had wrote a weighed point down for this one. You literally think big teeth oh. better now. Mark brought up <gasps> a movie that I both enjoy and specifically envisioned in thinking about this as a, as a point it's of discussion. It's the smaller tier of big teeth. It still counts. It does, but think bigger than that and think smaller than slightly small teeth. 
And which one would you rather have? Extraordinarily small teeth would essentially be no teeth at all, which is both a functional problem and would and be think of aesthetically... extraordinarily large teeth. That would be a problem, but and which not one an is easier to fix cosmetically? I mean, without what oral surgery and tens of thousands of dollars in having implants and or dentures or whatever made and put in and all this stuff i don't know braces are annoying but i had braces for a long time if your teeth are too large braces aren't going to do anything no fundamentally wade if your argument is just replace the tiny teeth that had been magicianly given to you you can do the same with big teeth yeah, then that's not yeah. respecting the premise. I don't know how expensive, like, a pair of dentures would be to put on. Now, if you're into replacing each tooth individually, sure. But you have to pull each large tooth and replace it's it that way. It's the same as way to pulling do it. out the small ones. The root is still the same. The nerves the are still the same. A doorknob is still going to be your free alternative to tooth you just surgery. just pop in a pair of dentures. Why? What is it going to mount on? They mount that to the jaw. It's cosmetically. It's for the cosmetic appeal. They mount it to the jaw. I think that's easier to do than dealing with the big teeth. They grind your teeth away first. And if you don't have a tooth there, guess what they mounted to? Big teeth allow for better surgical options if you have them. Other than no teeth that don't exist, and then they have to, like, do it to your jaw. I, again, we're talking about slightly bigger, slightly uh, smaller, sure. But I'm thinking of the extremes here. Mm -hmm. And even in the extremes. I am absolutely shocked to say this, but Mark has convinced me. That sounded meaner than I thought. <laughs> I went into this biased towards small. Congrats on the two of you being the only ones who will feel this way. Well, well I will watch the subreddit <laughs> and we'll see how this shakes out. Unless they are flat out just like blindly devoted fans, if they use oh, their brains, they you are the one that blind because the argument I agree with with Wade and small it's would be reasonable. better. I don't think so. Small, think it's better. Small term, like slightly. I'm with you, Wade. I'm you know with what you. What undercuts yours, Wade, is that it's based with kind of the assumption that you'll deal with them by just covering them up or replacing them. Hiding them cosmetically. And you're not they don't have to be you're not embracing the small Even if teeth. I did. You're ignoring uh, the issues and then saying, oh, you'll just fix it <laughs> with money. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm committing to that. No take back, please. Oh, a new man this this time. Sure. And when you have teeth so large you can't close your mouth, then what are you going to do Smile. Then? Oh, you'll fix them with what? Braces, which cost what? Oh, yeah, money. No, insurance covers braces, probably. Yeah, or like I said, a doorknob can rip those out for free. Oh, yeah, what does insurance cost? Money. I said doorknob. Tie a string, pull them out, free. So your solution to fixing big teeth is to remove the big teeth and have virtually small teeth. It was not my, my solution. solution. That was my argument against your solution. Teeth. Yes, I'm living with them. Not if you can't close your mouth. If you live from birth, and are, you, as you grow, your teeth are just that large. There's a limit to how much oh your body God. can adapt, but your body can adapt the way your jaw and facial structure grows might adapt enough for you to be able to live with insanely large teeth. I don't know. I'm not a science doctor. You know what you for <laughs> sure know, though? With small teeth, you'll be fine. <laughs> He's so worried. You're so afraid. Yeah, as long as you have the money for dentures or expensive implant. As a person who needs a tooth implant, I can tell you, it's surprisingly expensive. If they are so small you need it, then you have to consider the inverse. If they're so big, you can't close your mouth. No, I have considered. My inverse is the inverse that I was doing of yours. You're arguing against my argument of the inverse of yours. And you are ignoring the base premise that I am I'm okay with big teeth. Big, but overly big. The reality is, if they're too big for you to live with, mm -hmm. you'll die before it's an issue. And if they're too small for you to live with, you either have money or you got small teeth. And apparently, I'm on the side of dying before your big teeth are a serious problem. Oh, you're like seven years old, your adult teeth start coming in, it's time to die. <laughs> Good choice, guys. Good choice. Well, this is why I wanted to establish evolutionary boundaries. I stick by living with small teeth than dying with big ones. Oh, have fun with your wizard and your tiny shark teeth. Your millions of rows of small <laughs> teeth that are conglomerating. Because if you're imagining mine, I'm imagining yours. I don't know why you have to have more teeth and they're sharp. All right, all right. Well, I can't possibly take back these twice, so I gotta go with. I gotta go I with. I think you could even do it once, but hey, I guess I, I didn't only either. Watch you guys break the rules. <laughs> but I impress my own self sometimes. I gotta go. I gotta go with big on that one. Dun, dun, dun. Incredible is judgment.
subreddit, can you tell me the rules of this episode, please? I'm starting to not argument. understand. I don't know what you want. <laughs> it wasn't. All right. It really was. I mean, it wasn't, but I liked it. Let's be honest. All right, that's fair. That's fair. You like that he said Jim Carrey and The Mask. Let's be really honest. Who doesn't? You, do you not like The Mask? I love The Mask. It's one of my favorite movies. Well, then you understand. Do you not know me and that any pop culture reference that I like is basically the way to win me over in any situation? Guess not. Oh. I'm going to take notes with you. Yeah, let, uh, <laughs> don't, don't, don't. Remember that, guys. Can you send me a list of pop culture things you like? Oh, lots of them. Thanks, man. Funny one, funny stuff. Great, good, good one. You know, that was pretty specific, right? All right, search for not weed. Oh, I tell you, you're funny, babe. <laughs> babe, just move on. All right, this one it will not be as divisive. I can't imagine anything being as divisive <laughs> as that was. I can't believe that one was divisive. We're gonna try this one, and this is possibly the last one. Okay. Schools, big or small. Ooh. Mm. And this could be any any level of education. Primary school, all the way through high school, all the way through any higher education stuff, universities, colleges, whatever. Okay. As a person who went to a small elementary school, a big middle school, and a big high school, and going to a big community college, and transferring to a big um, university... I prefer small and the reason why I prefer small is because everything is just right there in one building even though there's a bungalows which does make sense but you know they're there but usually it's all under one one big um, building and just going from building to building that is like 20 feet long and running to from class to class it's exhausting and I'm glad that I'm doing most of my classes online because all my classes are in one chair. This chair. So, I don't know. But, like, I think I prefer small schools. Like, not just, like, a small independent school. Just, like, the size of the school being small. You know? I've been... All the schools I've been to and been in are just massive, you know, and I think, um, the smallest middle school we have, I think it's Longfellow, I might be wrong, it might have been Willard, I don't know, I don't know, but I know King's the biggest, because I, I went there, and it's fucking huge, um, but yeah, we only have one, um, high school, and that's Berkeley High, so, um, yeah, I think small for this one, I think small rather attend or have your child attend big school or small school i have my answer ready do you need time mark oh uh, you go ahead i will say small because i feel like with a big school it kind of reminds me of like going to college and some of like the bigger classes i took where there were just like 100 kids there was so little individual attention from the professor or teacher that i felt a lot less connected whereas in smaller classes in college and even like the 20 to 30 size classes in high school. I felt like there was more time for my questions specifically to be addressed. I had more one-on-one -on -one time with the teacher. I knew my classmates a little bit better, so I had more people to like talk to for help or questions or whatever. I don't know, I, I just, my brain tells me that I feel like a smaller setting with more individualized time from the teacher or professor would be more likely to have success. I feel like that would be the better way to get people to perform better in school. I think I've been to a small school before. It was one of the first schools I went to, Calvary Christian Academy. What was great about it is just like, it was so small that you knew everybody and you had to teach the same teacher for a few years. I can't say anything about the educational benefit of it just because I only went there till I was third grade. I had the option of going to either a small engineering school or UC. Uh, the small one usually is much more expensive. And College, yeah. Yeah, uh, but in private school too. That small school was also a private well, school. Oh yeah, I guess private schools I, would be I think too. that I really do want to agree with small, but I think practically in the world, small school means private. That's almost always what it means. And private schools are expensive. They're exclusive. And I don't really like my experiences with private schools because I couldn't afford them. And also, like, I'm not saying systemically why, but there's probably, like, bigger issues that I have no idea about versus, like, public versus private school. But I do think that there is a benefit to having a good public school education, but then almost 
always comes from a large school um, and there's money saving benefits for college. This is entirely a practical answer. I'm going to go big just because practically for most people out there, I have to. And for a lot of kids growing up, maybe like the bigger school, it's easier to like blend in, but probably needs more bullies. I don't know. But this is a very boring answer. I'm going to say big for those reasons. I feel like in capitalist, sure, bigger makes more sense. But I feel like if you're talking about performance... Oh, and absolutely. There's no doubt. Small education schools. Education quality, it would be small school. Probably usually do better. Like big schools, I imagine, would have more funding. They could probably have more programs. They probably have better things for um, like art classes, uh, special needs, no, right. uh, that kind of stuff, transportation. Good arguments, good arguments for big. Keep going. Yeah, but, but, I mean, I, I'm, I'm agreeing with you on that front, but small. Keep going. Yeah, keep going. But I feel like the point of school is to get an education, and the better education is going to come from more individualized attention, and I think that's a smaller school. Yeah, but that always costs money. And at the, at the end of the day, that's what you want. You you go to school to get a good education. And then, I mean, it, it, when we were growing up, it was to go to college. I don't know if college is pushed as hard now as it was when we were in school like just 10 years ago. I hope it's not. Yeah, definitely not. I, I mean, I hope so too. Considering how expensive it is compared to the potential return you get on it in mm -hmm. job markets. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's because of how expensive and stuff it is. Yeah. So, I mean, I agree. But for us growing up, it was do well in high school, hopefully get grants and uh, funding to go to college, get a good degree, whatever, get your dream job, quote unquote. But even if it's just like, I don't know, elementary school, middle school, high school, I feel like your better education comes whenever you have a chance to ask questions and learn rather than just get lost in the crowd. Hmm. Hmm. I feel as conflicted on this one as you both seem to feel, and I was sort of hoping you might agree. It is. It's a hard answer because... I think there's a lot of things to be said about both sides of it. It just depends on what you're going for. If you're going for athletics, you want to go to a bigger school. If you're going for your education, you want to go to a smaller school. Yeah. Money-wise, I mean, yeah, whatever you can afford, public or private. It is hard to get into, like, a good band program or marching band at smaller schools. Like, there are certain yeah. things. Sport, absolutely. And for many people, school is less about education, more about a pathway through sports and stuff like that. You definitely want that bigger school because it's more likely to win. It's more likely to be scouted. There's certainly benefits. You're not going to probably not going to go far in a private school if you're if sport is your goal. But then again, that's yeah. not, not everyone. How many people actually make it professionally in sports? A very few. But how many people dream to make it, though? That's, I think, well, the more important you quality. Can get, you can get money for college, too, I think, is the real goal of a lot of kids who are, are good at athletics and have this vision of, I want to get, you know, a baseball scholarship so I can get some or all of my college paid for. That is a good point, too, yeah. You're not likely to go pro. Good grades can do the same, though. If you do really well and you're in, like, honors and stuff like that, I mean, I had a lot of scholarships based on my performance in classes, not necessarily for sports. I, I also was honors. I mean, I'm not, wasn't, I didn't have the best grades, but also, <laughs> going into college, I lost my grants pretty quickly after my first year's performance. Um, but it still was never enough to cover my scholarship. I mean, usually sports scholarships cover 100%. Yeah, but they barely, rarely do they give those out, though, to, like, the full ones. Like, a lot of players end up being, like, walk-ons and stuff. Only your star quarterbacks and, like, you know, four or five star athletes, at least in football specifically, are going to get your full ride. I mean, I think you're underestimating how many colleges there are because I learned from Tyler on, <laughs> on Go that there are tens of thousands of colleges, and I had no idea about that with, with well, I guess that's true. representatively yeah. hundreds of thousands of different sports uh, with which to divide people. There are incredible number of opportunities. It isn't just like the Big Ten or whatever. But how many athletes go into college and don't get it versus do, I guess, is the question. I don't I mean, know the answer. I, really. I think a majority of active athletes in college, and this is from a long time ago, so this is both out of date and hard to remember. I took a sports law class in law school where we covered this pretty extensively. The majority of active athletes in college, I believe, are not on scholarship, but the, a large percentage as compared to a large percentage of the rest of the population who potentially are on academic scholarships, a large percentage of the athletes, especially if they're scouted and if they're you know at a high level of their sport, actually do get scholarship and they're not all necessarily full ride but even you know just tuition scholarship or half tuition or anything like that it's a big thing if all you have to do is keep playing the sport that you probably you know really enjoy that you love that you may hope to to go pro on or transfer to a bigger school or whatever it's still a very small percentage of the like population of athletes I've got numbers collegiate athletes Ooh. but it's a higher ratio of 
scholarship athletes to non, as opposed to scholarship academic only students to the rest of the academic students. 6% of 8 million student athletes in high school will make a spot on a college roster. 6% of 8 million, sure. Of that 6%, only 1.3% receive a full or partial athletic scholarship. All right, there you have it. Doesn't help with the big small argument, though. You said it was 8 million total? It says 8 million, so this one says, of all the almost 8 million student athletes in high school, just about 6% will earn a spot on a college roster. That is via a very trustworthy site called noobgains.com. Oh, <laughs> yeah. What was the next percentage? 2% or something? 1.3%. Uh, so this is whattobecome.com. 1.3% uh, of those athletes receive a full or partial athletic scholarship. 48% of students receive federal scholarships. Only 1.3% of athletes receive a full or partial athletic scholarship, is what this That says. sounds incredibly low because that would mean there are only 6,300 students in the entire United States on athletic scholarship of any sort, which I refuse to believe is even remotely an accurate number. Do all sports have some athletes that are on scholarship for their sport? I mean, it depends on the institution. Some, some places may have no academic scholarship. Some places it may only be football or basketball. I know at UC, we had scholarship on like football, basketball, baseball, men's and women's soccer. I believe we had scholarship track and field athletes at UC. UC is a relatively, it's not a huge institution, but it's a relatively big uh, state school. And I know that there were scholarship athletes on a variety of our sports teams. We're also a Division One school. We're going to consider all of the like non yeah. Division One schools, all the community colleges. But like, there's <laughs> no way the total is 6,300 in the United States. That's like the amount of scholarship athletes maybe in a large, medium or large state in the United States, I would guess. But maybe that's way off. I don't know. That just seems insanely low. I have no idea. I'm, I'm, these numbers, I gave the sources. I don't know how accurate they are. I mean, I just look into it. But that was just a quick Google search of an um, average number of high school athletes in the U.S. and percentage of college athletes on full scholarship. And it gave me a full or partial answer. That seems wild. But yeah. I don't know either. That just doesn't seem like it encompasses everyone to me. So it seems really low to me, too. I thought it would be higher than that. Uh, but anyway, what are we talking about? Big oh, small schools. schools. <laughs> Big small, small schools. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, anyway, yeah, it's complicated. And I think the only thing that I have as a concern that you guys didn't already say is as a parent, now, having seen it, it's how school affected me as a person or what I think it did to me. I think it's important, big schools are important for kids as they develop. And this is nothing against anyone who was like homeschooled or went to small private schools. I think it's important and it helps a person develop their perspective of like the world and of other people, what it's like outside of your small group of like friends and family who you know really well, to be around more people. I think being in a bigger school gives you a wider range of experiences. It exposes you to more like cultures, more diverse people. I, I undervalued when I was a kid how much like I got to travel a little bit, like I got to see Europe when I was in high school, and uh, all of that stuff really changed like uh, how I felt about humanity, and I feel like it gave me more empathy because it helped me understand that what I think life is is a very, 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 very small fraction of what life is around the country and around the world. So I think that's an important part too, because if you're only ever in private schools, if you go to small, you know, high school and you go to a small private college, you're potentially only around people who are basically like you. Yeah. What are we counting as small or big here? Because I mean, can you have a small public school versus like a bigger private school too? I like, mean, so you can all... have public charter schools, which are technically public schools you don't have to pay for, but are not included in a district. I actually worked at a public charter school in Cincinnati and we had, I want to say we had less than a hundred students in our building. It was a K through 12 school, but we basically had one classroom for each grade level. When I think small, I'm thinking like 15 to 25 kids in a class. That's that's at the school I worked at. That's kind of the numbers we had. It was more like 15 to 30 because a couple of our grades were more populated than the others. Like, was Milford a big or a small school, you think? Uh, I mean, it's hard to say. I think it was like a medium-sized school. On the bigger side, technically speaking. Cause Our graduating was... class was like 500, but that also included like the trade schools coming to graduate with us. Mm -hmm. I would say that's pretty big. Not Definitely not like the biggest, but in our Sorry, actual if you hear school, something. I feel like we probably had like 400 in our grade. I think there's probably a decent amount from the trade schools. Mm -hmm. I, I, yeah, I wasn't even going to get into the social side, which is a big thing that I do agree with 100%, but I was trying for the sake of brevity to not yeah. dive into that. It's a big issue, but I ultimately, I have to go with small, I think.
It's just surprising to me. It's tough. I get what you're saying. It's just like if I if I had a kid right now and I was like, where's they gonna go? It's like I'm gonna put him in a bigger school. Like I, yeah. I'm gonna go to a good school district, but I want it to be big for that very social reason. Yeah. I think the main drive for me is, and I would probably feel this way about my own kid as well. I would want a big public schools for most of their education, but for the part where you really want an education, like my law school that I went to is like a small private school. I would want a small school because the, I feel like the education is potentially more direct. And that's not what everyone needs as a student. But for me as a student, it helped a lot that the professors like knew, I knew all my professors personally, they would check on me. They would sort of hold me accountable, right? If I slacked off and came to a class unprepared they they it wouldn't just be like i could sit and hide and not volunteer i had to talk i had to participate which means i had to be on the ball and the professors wouldn't like make me go in the hall or anything juvenile but if you weren't prepared then they called on you the professor was always kind of like okay and moved on and that helped me because in, in public school i always just hid i would just keep my head down and i didn't have to talk and it's fine but it also let me slack a lot mm, that's true okay i have solved this problem and we have made this decision for the entire world. That's the end. Uh -huh. That one went on a long time, so that's going to be the last one. Because Aww. that was way more than I thought it was going to be. That got away at the Intel scoreboard. I mean, I wrote all this down, but uh, I'm going to go ahead and take a look over at that scoreboard. And the world, which we know you are listening, I'm sure you'll be excited to learn mm -hmm. that in all things, for all things, and in every situation, small is better. Woo! Including teeth. Woo! Teeth. I guess falls under that. So really, and although I ended up signing with Mark, on um, the long run, I guess Wade wins teeth too. It's interesting. Uh, but that, of course, being the most important matter, decided and out of the way, I now have to pick a winner for the episode. And although you both won the same number of rounds, it is currently four to four. Uh, one of you was more right more of the time. Not all rounds are created equal. Because of the decision that we arrived at, obviously small is better. And the winner of the largest number of small votes mm. is Wade. Uh, Wade never once won wow. a big vote. Huh? Or even voted big, as far as I recall. I did. I went big on vehicles. Oh, okay. Oh, that's true. Abandoned that pretty quickly. I think it's the only time I did. Yeah. That didn't go well, so you were like, never again. But yeah, Wade Wade voted small and won four times. Mark was split two and two, very well-rounded, which is not what we wanted, Mark. No, yeah, right. Mark. But, uh, go big or go home, Mark, and it looks like you're going home. You should have gone big then. What are you talking about, small man? Go big and go <laughs> home, I think. Oh, I'm keeping it nice and concise. Yes, very concise. Good work, everybody. Uh, Wade, do you have a winner speech? Uh, I, I'm going to keep it small. Thanks. All right, Mark, big loser speech. Verily doth I say that there is no greater grace than grace in loss. Loss can be a, an honorable thing if taken to heart. The reasons for that loss. I don't know, yada, yada, more, more. Can I fast forward through this large amount of filler? Yeah, I can see why we picked small, I guess. I don't mm. yeah, go, go small, everybody. That's the, that's the moral lesson that has been decided. Everything is now small, and if it's not, it's wrong. So, there we go. All right. Uh, yeah, that's it. Good win, Wade. Thank you for listening, gentle no listeners. Uh, if you're a new gentle listener, make sure you're following the podcast. Subscribe to it, or hit the plus, or however it works, on wherever you listen, to make sure that you always get a notification when our episodes go live. Make sure that you follow Mark Markiplier, you probably already do. Make sure you follow Wade, Lord Minion 777 or Minion 777 on Twitch specifically. Uh, myself, MySkerm on all places, including Twitch, where I'm back at now. So look at that. And also, I for once did not forget to mention our merch. Store.distractiblepodcast.com, probably. New designs coming soon. Yeah. Sorry, yes. everyone. I had to look at all those sold outs for so long. <laughs> it's work. It's been busy. It's been so busy. Mm -hmm. uh, everyone busy. It's been a busy year. It has. That's it. Good podcast. I'm glad we solved that and uh, look forward to more important decisions that will have impact on everyone's lives around the world in the future. Coming here from the single greatest podcast and most important broadcast on the internet, of course, it's Distractable. And with that, I say podcast, podcast out. out. Alrighty. Oh, that was a long one. Um, the only notes that I that I put in my notebook. I don't know why I put it on my notebook. This episode ah. of Distractable is presented by. Stop Andy. it. Um, the only um. Let me close it so that way it doesn't. Play.
like and um <coughs> no it's about the dog okay so i've never owned a dog i want to own a dog but because of miss coffee pants over there my mom she's allergic to dogs she's allergic to dogs hair and saliva so it's not a really good you know thing and with pyro it's like a little good it's a little better but no it's not it's 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 she's like basically threatening me to like give them away or something like that but you know we, we try we try um but um what was i gonna say oh yeah dogs that i have taken care of for or have walked in my life okay so um let's start with my first uh the first was mickey mickey was my grandmother's dog he was a Maltese, a little light white Maltese. He was not, um, not that he wasn't taken care of good, but my grandpa, my grandpa Jim, when he was alive, he would keep feeding the dog people food, which is not a good thing to do. So he had digestive stuff happening, and then he died, like, I think, when I was 17, 16, I want to say. I got axed at, but yeah, um... He died, um, but yeah, I used to walk him whenever I go to Grandma Rita's house. I used to pet him. He was a little, he was like a yapper, so, um, yeah. But, um, the next dog I took care of was my, um, uncle's, was it a boxer mixed with a pit bull? It was some breed of mix like that, but... Uh, was it Bonzo? Brown? Brown? Something B? Something of the B? Some of the B? But, like, I remember him because, um, I took care of him when he was in, when I went to New York for the, for, uh, summer. Um, I got to take care of him while I was staying at my grandma, my papa and pumpkin's house. And, um, and one day I was, I was about to play with him, but he bit, he didn't bit my, bit my thumb off, but he bit like part, like he bit into my like thumb and it hurt and it bled and I, he felt so bad afterwards and I felt so sorry for him, but you know, he didn't mean it by it, but he was, he was just playing rough. So yeah, I was about like 17, 16 at the time. So yeah. Um, the next one was, I took care of many dogs in the animal shelter when I worked there. Um, all the range from small dogs to the biggest one was a um, German Shepherd and a, uh, um, what's the dog's breed name? Um, the St. Bernard. St. Bernard. St. Bernard was the biggest one there. Uh, smallest was a Chihuahua. Chihuahuas were the smallest one there. There was one weenie dog, which was cute. So yeah, um, most of them were like puppies, not puppies, but like young, like like in their younger years. But most of them were old too, and like in the middles and stuff like that. They're either lost pets or pets that had nowhere else to go or strays, you know. Um, but I was in charge of like cleaning their poop and making sure they're fed and stuff like that, making sure they're. The area is clean, so I did that. Um, I also took care when, um, well, my, um, the one that I talked about with that by my thumb, he died, um, I want to say like two years. Either he died or he was, or he got sold, or Uncle Marcus sold him to someone else. I can't remember, I gotta ask him. But he has a new one now, um, Ox, Oxian, Orion, something with an O, um, which is kind of the same breed, but it was more of a, um, it was not more of a pit, it was more like, um, I have photos of him, I'll put him right here, like, like, right here, here he is, with me, and I, I did that, um, over Christmas, I, I, um, he was with my grandma and grandpa, and my puppy and papa's house, and, um, yeah, he was, he moved to, he moves, he moved to, um, Florida. So, you know, I hoped he was okay during the whole hurricane Ian thing. Um, but like, yeah, he was, he, I think he was about to make transit for his, for that dog to come 
to where he lives. But I don't think they were doing that yet. But they lived, he lived there. He was in the basement where I was staying because uh, mom's spare room became pumpkins like little you know, sewing area. So no, it was not not that sewing area, but um, it was kind of the sewing area because like. Like downstairs is the ba the basement has the living room, the washing machine, the heater, and Papa's office and Pumpkin's new sewing um, area. But because of the dog being there, um, she kind of moved some of her sewing stuff up to the the spare guest room. But I, I did sleep there. I did sleep there. I just had a sleeping a blow up mattress instead of an actual bed, but it was fine. Um, and he was very cute. He was very cute. And I got to walk him. I got to feed him. I got to play with him. It was very cute. You know. And I, and these, my um, my uh, cousin was jealous. I was snuggling up with her dog when she's in the military. And I'm here snuggling up with her dog. Onyx! I remember. Onyx. I think I think it's Onyx. I think. I don't have a good memory. But yeah. Um. Uh. Any other dogs? Um. Is it Buddy? No, that's no, that's his name, not Buddy. Uh, but my um, cousin, my cousin Gio, has a um, a, a golden retriever, kind of who who kind of looks like um, a Chica in a way. But um, what's the dog's name? It's not Buddy. It's something else. I can't remember, but. He's a sweetie. He's very old. He's a very old dog. He was he came to their family like when my cousin was like 8 and he's like now like what? 18, 19 years old. So it's an old dog. Um but yeah, I went I went over to um Gio's house a couple of uh a year ago and um just like for I think things uh for like 4th of July or whatever. Or no, I we went there once for Grandpa Jim's funeral, and then like a few month, few years after that, um, like a year ago today, we uh, we went there to like celebrate. I think Fourth of July, I think, or it was some some event. Um, they were doing the draft and stuff like that, but I got to play with the doggy, which was cute. Um, but yeah, but most of the dogs that I've listed are are big dogs, you know. And I love big dogs. My favorite breed is a Great Dane, and it shall have forever be Great Dane because I grew up watching Scooby Doo, the movie one and two, and then I and then I grew up watching Marmaduke, and just that dog. The 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 you know do you know how big those fucking dogs can be? They're a miniature horse. I don't care what you say. They're a miniature horse. Okay, and I love them. And they're so cute. And I, when I get out of this freaking apartment and I have a place of my own, I'm gonna have a Great Dane, no matter what. And I'm gonna train it to be my service animal, so he can help me with my diabetes, and everything will be fine. Cause I can take him anywhere. So, fuck yeah. Um, but yeah. Um. Yeah. So I think that's all the dogs that I've taken care of. Like I said, I never had a dog myself i've only taken care of people's dogs because i i'm not allergic to dogs i have like al i do have allergies but not to dogs i have allergies like to dust and stuff like that which papa's basement was very dusty but once i was out of the out of the dust i my sinuses would clear up with around the dog so you know it's fine uh but yeah that's basically all i have to talk about um yeah, I'll just cross that out. So I put that on my homework. And I don't know why. But if you guys enjoyed this, make sure you leave a like and subscribe. And make sure you ring that bell because I heard that does something. Um, but anyways, this was a very good episode of Destructible. And please, make this number one on not only Spotify, but also Apple Music. Please. I, I, I want, I want to, I, I, I want to, I want to see it. I, 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 I'm, I'm, a, I'm a simp. I'm going to say that right now. I am a simp and I, 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 I missed my chance when I was younger 
because I was like what back in 2015. So um, I'm not gonna miss my I'm not gonna miss my chance. So um, please, 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 just just do it. Just, just, just do it. Just do it. Why not? Just why not? Why not? You do you have anything better to do? No, then do it. Then just 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 make make this guy happy, please. Thank you. Um, but anyways, it's been M D D D Y. I don't know, but I'll see you guys next time. Peace.